If you've been wondering if you can invite a guest user from another organization into your team's environment, we're going to walk through that today. As an organization who works a lot with clients on projects, we are often wondering for the best tool to communicate and collaborate with them. So we'll need to keep in communication with clients very often. Um, Day-to-day chat tools work really well. But then we also have a lot of documents that we may want to share with them, get feedback on, be able to co-edit. So we're constantly looking for the best, most efficient, modern way to do that with our clients. Um, With that being said, Microsoft Teams has really gained a lot of traction. The Microsoft has done a lot to advance that tool and make it more functional in the workplace, as especially the hybrid workplace that exists today. So we've really been exploring, do we want to add our clients as guests to our team's environment to work on projects together? And when we think about that, we want to know what is that experience like for them? Is it easy? Does this make sense as the best way to do to accomplish that goal of really keeping up communication and collaboration on a project? So today we're going to walk through what that process looks like so that we can show you what that looks like for adding a guest user and you can decide if that's a good way for you to work with others outside of your organization as well. We'll also answer some of the questions that come along with adding a guest user such as what happens to permissions, um, what's the experience like in their Teams environment, what happens to notifications, and some other common questions that we hear. Before we get into it, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if this topic is interesting to you and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted every time we upload a new video. All right, so let's walk through what it looks like to add a guest to your team and then we'll look at what that looks like from their perspective as well. So right here, I have my team and my test organization pulled up. We are going to go over to the team that you would like to add the guest to. So it's important to remember that this is team specific. They're not going to have access to any team that you don't add them to. So, and it doesn't go by channels, it goes by the whole team. Um, Of course, you can have a private channel if you wanna have a channel that the guest cannot see, but overall, they're gonna have access to the team as a whole, which includes, you know, the chat spaces, the um, open channels, and files, the SharePoint site, and so on. So, I'm just gonna click this ellipsis over here next to my team and go to add member. All right, so here you're gonna type in the user's full email address from their organization. And then Teams is gonna ask you, they're gonna recognize that that email address is not from your organization. So they'll ask you, do you wanna add this person as a guest? And I'm gonna say yes, uh, and then click add. Now what's gonna happen is that that user is going to receive an email saying, hey, you've been added as a guest to such and such team in um, this organization, would you like to accept? And they will need to accept that invitation to get to the next step, which is them actually seeing everything that's inside. And as one of the administrators of this team, you can always review who is inside of it. If you, want to, if you don't remember who's in there as a guest, if it's a project you've started before and are restarting up, just click the little I info icon um, next to your team and you, it'll show you pretty clearly who's in here from your organization and then any guests are gonna be indicated by the guest um, word in parentheses. So when I'm up in this team, I can see who's involved from my organization, but also the people I just invited as a guest. So now the guest user that you just added is going to receive an email letting them know you have been added as a guest to X team. This is the email that they will receive. This is what it looks like, letting them know they've been added. And then the guest will need to click this to essentially accept that invitation and then to open it up um, in their environment and to view the team that they were added to. So now we're going to jump over and see what this looks like from that guest experience, the guest that we just added. So when we pull up their teams, um, basically this is what their team's environment looks like normally. So this is everything they already had access to in their organization. Essentially what they'll need to do is go up and click their picture, the little circle at the top. Once they click that, they will see we have M Dressel in parentheses guest. So that's what we just added them to as a guest user. If we click that, now we're seeing the channel, this Ashley's test team is the team that we just added them to in the M Dressel environment. 
So essentially, they'll use this little circle up here to jump between their profiles. Now that we're over here, I can see the team that I was added to as a guest, and I can only see that team. I can see the tabs at the top that are also associated that to that team. I could also jump over to the SharePoint page that's associated to this team as a guest. And essentially, I'm also going to have access to all the channels within this team as long as they are not private. If I go back up here and jump back over to my home environment, um, it'll take just a second, and then it's just that easy to switch between the two Teams environments that you have access to. So now I am here back in my home environment. This is where I work at my home organization and the Teams and channels that I have access to. All right, so now that we've looked at uh, physically, what does the experience look like to jump between teams once you are added as a guest to someone else's environment? Let's talk about some of the frequently asked questions that come up. Number one that people want is they want to be able to see the teams they have access to without having to jump out of teams, without having to exit or open a new window. Unfortunately, you can't do that. It is quick and easy to do this whole click your profile picture and jump over, but what you can't do is get the teams that you are added to as a guest to show right underneath your everyday teams in your home organization. So if you're someone who likes to work out of the team's application for your everyday work day, um, you can't leave it open the way you normally would without having to switch over to check on the teams that you have guest access to. If you're used to working with a tool like Slack is one of the more popular ones out there, you can um, jump between channels that your other organizations that you're a guest in and your home organization are all within the same window. So that is something that's definitely going to be different here if you're used to that. So one workaround, if you really don't like having to jump um, between organizations this way, is what we'll often do is open up an incognito window. Um, so in your browser of preference, you can open an incognito window, be signed in as a guest um, or as a different user in Teams, and that way you'll have all of your environments open at once, and it's you won't have to exit to quick add a comment or collaborate on a document in another organization. When I say incognito window, what I essentially mean is that provides a blank slate, a private browser for you to be logged into another organization without um, interfering with the other windows and things you may be logged in to that are already open. The next question that everyone asks regarding this is, will I receive notifications from the environment that I'm a guest in? So the answer is yes, but. If you have your notifications turned on for pop-up notifications and you're working in your home organization's team environment, um, you will still receive those pop-up notifications if somebody tags you or hits one of the triggers that you are set to be notified for within the team that you are a guest in. And then you can always jump over and go check on that. Um, in general, if there's activity going on in the team that you are a guest in, you're not going to have um, an indicator on your home team's environment that there's something over there that you need to check. So, for example, right here, you know, this is bold. That's letting me know there's something in one of those channels that I haven't read yet. Or when you click up here, um, you know, this isn't telling me that there's messages in the environment that I'm a guest in that I haven't checked yet. So you might find yourself, um, if you're just switching over once a day to check on the guest, the environment you're a guest in, you might find yourself having to catch up a little bit because you weren't aware that a conversation was happening over there. Because unless somebody tags you, you're not getting that notification and there's really not a badge alerting you when I view this little status um, window, alerting you that something's going over there that you may need to check up on. That might be coming down the line because in the mobile experience, the notifications are actually a little more advanced. Um, there is a little red indicator badge letting you know you have unreaded unread um, activity in the guest environment. So that is helpful if you're mainly a mobile user to let you know that there's stuff over there that you need to check and you're less likely to miss things. So the last question in everyday use that people ask is, should I invite somebody to my team or should I have them invite me to theirs? And the answer really depends on 
you know, your organization's role and the organization that you're working with, what we do is we just like to make it whatever's easier for our clients. And because of the jump over experience, as in, you know, hitting your profile icon, jumping over, perhaps not knowing the nuances of when you're going to see notifications or when you're not, we like to be invited as guests to our client's organization because we know how it works. We know the ins and outs. We want to make it easier for them so that they don't have to jump between environments. They can stay in one environment. We know that what we need to check, um, and then we'll be active over there to just make it the easiest experience for our clients. So basically, if you're wanting the smoothest experience, you'll want to invite people over to, to yours. But if they're your clients and you want to make it smoother for them, um, it's really better to be a guest in their environment. All right, so overall, I think that guest user access in Teams has come a long way, and it is a great option to communicate and collaborate with people outside of your organization. You really can't beat the collaboration capabilities within Teams, and it's great to know as uh, people that are involved in a lot of projects here that we can easily do this with people who aren't necessarily in our organization. If you have any questions, please leave those down in the comment box below, or we have open office hours once a month. We'll leave a link to that in the description box. Feel free to join one of those sessions where we answer questions live for an hour. Also in the description box is a link to more resources. We have a whole learning center on our website. Feel free to check that out. It is organized by topic, um, so you can find a variety of uh, similar topics that you might need help on. We also have a podcast called Make Others Successful. There is a link to that also in the description box below. We'd love for you to check it out. Thanks so much for joining us today, and we hope to catch you soon. Thank you.